Alright, welcome back to Apollo Justice. Last time, we were handed a... a... um... a kind of standoffish client who may have killed her father with poison. Uh, but we'll see. And we need to investigate the scene. Because we just talked to Emma, and that's it. I mean, there's paintings everywhere. There's a painting back here. Hey! There's a painting hidden back here. Hey, you're right. What if it's embarrassing somehow? He didn't want anyone to see it. He certainly seemed pleased by the possibility. Huh, it's so normal. It's hardly something to be get mad at about. Huh? What is it, Apollo? Well, doesn't this painting look like... Never mind. I need a professional opinion on this. Yeah, it, it's it's that other painting over there. Why? I have no idea. I guess I'll show it to Emma. Emma, why is this painting hidden? And also same as the other one. Oh, Emma, I was wondering about this painting here. Ah, ah. That one. What about it? W what about it? Yeah, what about it, Apollo? Take a closer look at it. Both of you. Now, look at this one. This is the third painting he was working on. Hey, did the same. I was hoping you wouldn't find that. You're right, though. Do you miss him was copying this painting? Wow, it's pretty good. Copying a painting? What for? Why don't... Emma! Why was he copying the painting? Well, whatever. Is this his coffee, right here? Ah, that's the victim's coffee mug. Aha! So the poison is in here. This is my first time seeing a real poison mug of coffee. I would hope so. Poisoned coffee? Not exactly, actually. What do you mean? Oh, here's the poison we found in the coffee. What? You have to figure out the rest yourself. I'm officially not on your side, after all. I mean, true, but... Eek, Apollo, that, that's where the body was. That's the spot where Jumisim passed away. He put the coffee mug to his lips, and the next moment, there's quite a bit of paint on the ground. See that half-painted painting there? He must have been working on it right after the moment he died. Wow, it's true artist to the end. Maybe he started a year ago and was procrastinating. Could be. What's going on over here? There's a... little desk. Take a close look at this desk here. Oh, zooming in. There's a little mannequin guy pointing. Hmm, something about the way this figure is posed. I've seen that pose before. It's you, Apollo. See, you're making one of your flamboyant gestures. Please, I'm a professional. I know why it's posed like that. Coincidence. There's a picture. This is Drew Missum. Oops, that was the wrong button. So this is Jumisim. This ogre must be Vera. Yes, I took that some years ago. They look close. Happy little family. So you arrested his daughter. I... Look, I was personally against that, okay? She just didn't seem very suspicious, scientifically speaking. Uh-huh, right. There's a... there's a tiny... picture frame. Oh, cute! Look at the tiny frame, Apollo. Tiny is right. I think it's barely two inches high. What picture would fit in that? None. Apparently, it's empty. No glass in it either. What's that doing sitting on the desk? This is a lesson for us all. Be sure to check the size when you buy frames. <laughs> There's a letter. Hey Apollo, what's this feather thingy? It's not a pen, like an old-fashioned quill pen. But it doesn't have a pointy end. That's mostly for sweeping. Did. De de detris? De detris off his desk? Wow, well, you, you sure know a lot, Emma. Bold and scientific. That's my motto. Exactly what about that was bold or scientific? Besides using that word, I have never heard before. This notebook has been opened and resealed. Oh, I know how to do that. Take a pot of boiling water and hold the envelope up to the seam. The glue melts and it opens. Cool, huh? Whoever did this wasn't so delicate. You're right. Looks like they just ripped it open and stuck it back together. Huh? The postmark on this letter is from seven years ago. Let's go and open a letter and then seal it again. Hmm, I better hang on to this. 
Interesting. Got like books on this little desk. Is this a journal? Oh, talk about a clue. Let's read it. But what is it, Apollo? He didn't write the name of the killer, did he? It's new, he didn't write a single line. Ah, you had been going for a while there. Hmm. What is all this stuff back here? Is this just for painting, Apollo? That'd be a drafting table. Drafting? Basically, it's a tool for making precise diagrams. Wow, painting is harder than I thought. Why would a painter need a drafting table? He's an architect, too. There's, like, x-rays? What's all this equipment here for? It doesn't look very artistic, really. Hit everything from a lathe to a laser cutter. Looked like he was ready to work on metals and wood, too. But his equipment's a bit old, to tell the truth. Why would a painter need all of this? In the dust, I'd say he hadn't used this stuff for years. This part doesn't fit with the rest of the studio. Oh, do you think I could borrow this? I want to cut a quarter in, in half to make a trick going. This is a crime scene, Trucy. <laughs> but these cost like 50 bucks at the ma magic shop. There's a... Uh, paint. Look at all these paints, Apollo. There's so many. He's got like 20 kinds of red. We could repaint your suit, Apollo. How about the shade of green? That'll be enough of that, thanks. <laughs> huh. Let's take a closer look. Why are two of the paintings identical? It certainly is a bit curious. And a whole lot suspicious. Oh, we're just looking at the paintings in general. Okay. There's a little desk over there. Not important. Letter. Is there anything in there? That letter box looks funny sitting in a room like this. Let's take a look. Empty. The other half of that letter box is actually connected to the outside of the studio. Mis Mr. Miston would put his letters in there. The postman took them away. Impressive that someone still writes letters in this day and age. Or wrote, rather. Hmm. So, Emma, about this coffee mug. I hope you weren't trying to grill me for information. You know I'm not talking. I suppose you're a detective here. Why don't you two take a look at yourselves? If you find a clue, I might be un not unwilling to help a hand. Lend a hand. I think he's gonna help us, Apollo. Let's check out this mug, shall we? Okay. Has an M on it. Does it say... Hmm, I mean, it, it looks like it wants to say Miss Hand, but it's just an M and, and squiggles. I mean, there's this blue on it. Hey, look there! That stain doesn't look health so healthy, Apollo. It must be the Blue Mountain stuff we've been hearing about. Eh, but tell me if Blue Mountain coffee isn't this blue. Now this stain is probably... Hmm, better ask Emma. Emma, the stain on the coffee. Do I have a proper... Yes, I do. I bet Emma can help us out here. Don't forget, if I get you everywhere with her, Apollo. Huh? What are you two whispering about? Well, I was thinking... I mean, what does it always do when we run into a crime scene? What is it we always do, scientifically? Ah, uh, you know me too well. Okay. Okay, maybe we can get, um, scientific now? Oh, I suppose. This is this, this once. Bring me a thing you find that's resistant and we'll check it out. Yay! <clears throat> we lured her in with science! Um, Emma, about this mug. There's a pale blue, uh, residue on the rim. Eh? Ah, th that. Yes, well, it's just a rumor. But I've heard there's a kind of coffee called Blue Mountain. I'm pretty sure it isn't actually blue, Emma. <laughs> ah, right. Okay, you got me. That's left over from my testing spray. Forensic science! I knew Robbie was behind this somehow, Emma. It's not a hobby. So what kind of scientific stuff were you up to? The spray, that's what. It turns blue when it touches poison. So the poison that killed the victim was on the smug. 
That's right, see? It wasn't in the coffee. The killer applied it to the rim of the mug itself. Wow, science is amazing. It certainly is helpful. Maybe Ian would be willing to help us out a bit more. You should try putting her up, Apollo. They say fodder get you everywhere. It's certainly worth taking talk to her a bit more. I'm about poison analysis. I was afraid you were going to ask that. See, this solution is used to test for... Uh, Artroquin? Artroquin? Sure. Arto... huh? Artroquin, the deadly poison found in the autopsy. Uh-oh, I know that spark in her eyes. She's getting excited. Best tread lightly. It's one of the most virulent poisons, but it is absorbed into the body, absorbed into the body astonishingly slow. It takes at least 15 minutes from the time you ingest it for adverse effects to show. Oh, and guess what? Here's a race for sound. Th that's fine, really. We don't need to know all the gory details. I think I get it. You just spray this stuff on something you want to test, right? Precisely. You can even find the slightest trace of poison with this. I want to try it too, Emma. Pretty please? You don't have to ask twice. I already used it on everything suspicious, of course. Okay, let's give it a whirl, Apollo. Ah! What are you doing? I'm just seeing if I got a reaction off of you. How's this for a reaction? Never do that again. I'm not poisonous. Tell that to those hapless witness on the stand. Let's just get down and check for real poison, shall we? Hmm. Spray everything. Nothing. Spray everything. I'm not finding anything. I found nothing. I'm pretty sure I, I sprayed everything. Too bad, no reaction there. I'm sure I'm gonna check out all the likely spots. Wait a second. What is it, Apollo? Did you spray that little desk over there? I don't think so. The spray probably can't reach that far, you know. Let's check it out, just to be sure. Sure. Couldn't find anything anywhere else. Hey, what? what is that? Why is there poison in this tiny frame? Eek! A reaction, Apollo! Ah! Where? Where? Inside that cute little frame! Look! Well, would you look at that? Nice going, Juicy. I know how to work magic. Never mind that I was the first... I was the one who found it. Tiny frame added. Hmm. Why is it that... Why does the inside of that frame have poison on it? Looks like we found the only other place that was poisoned, in any case. Interesting. What do you have to say to that, Emma? Emma, I was wondering if you could take a look at this. Look, I'm a detective. Atte detective. You can't ask me any old thing and expect an answer, okay? Then you need to be a little more focused in your inquiries. Scientifically, even. Hmm. I mean, really, I think that's everything that's here. So I'm gonna go take a detour to the Coliseum. Woohoo! This is it, Apollo. The place where magic and dreams converge. Just a while ago, it was the place where murder and nightmares converged. Let's go say hi to Uncle Valint. What about the case? Wahahaha! Only before we lapse like that. The young mistressy! How fun I hoped to meet again only to tell myself it was an impossible dream. Tee <laughs> Uncle Valint, how's it going? I'm happy and glad to see you too. Of course you are. Beauty is definitely not one of his stronger traits. Well, mistressy, how does the day find you? You come to give me a flowers, do it after the show. I beg of you. Actually, we came to wish you good luck. And congratulations on your big magic show. Oh, it is I who wish congratulations wish to congratulate you. Not everyone is so lucky as to witness the miracles I shall perform. Yeah, yeah, you're amazing. We get the picture. The world watching in wonderment is magnifique Man magnifies Mag Magnifi Man Magnifi's illusions are reborn. 
Current stage, but my hand. Hmm. The Big Magic Show. Everyone's talking about the Big Magic Show. Is it true that Grammarty, the Gramate Miracle is back after a seven year absence? Mr. Trucian, what's the puzzle? This show and this honor should have been his. Daddy. My cool magician in trading, Zach Gramate. That terrible thing happened. It's okay. Your father was a great musician, Juicy. If you were alive, then I, Valent Bramarte, would have been proud to stand up on the stage as his assistant. Thanks, Uncle Valent. You know, I'm happy you're doing the show. I think we get to see the great, great Magnifique's illusions again. She really is looking forward to this, isn't she? Magnifique Gramarte. I meant for the magnificent Grammy. Magnifique Gramarte was the true deity among magicians. The creator god who gave birth to the magic and illusions that defied our own very own imaginations. I was little when I last saw when I last saw one, but I still remember his shows. He had wheelies in a sports car through the air above the audience, and sped off to the outer space faster than the speed of sound. I'm guessing that memory is a bit embellished. For seven long years, the world has been waiting for our miracle to match his. As here to the Grimarte troops secrets, it falls to me to provide one. That is my god given destiny. Um... Yes, you, nameless face who speaks for the nameless masses. How can I help you? The world is waiting. Why do you hold up for seven long years? Hmm. It appears that that is uninformed. Perhaps you have heard of the magic known as La, which governs our land. I have, though I'm not sure it qualifies as magic. The performance of Magnifi's miracle was impossible. A certain law prevented it for seven years, but no more. Seven years? That phrase sure likes to pop up, doesn't it? And why was that? What a matter called performance rates, just you see. Performance rates, huh? Can you tell us about these performance rates? Magnifique's magic relied on an incredible innovative idea. A trick, if you will. The trick is considered as property and as such is protected by property laws. Intellectual property, maybe. Magnifique knew this and bequeathed it in his will. To one person. You mean him? Yes, Miss Trucy was your father. Tech Marty was the inheritor of the Grimite Grimite Miracle. Daddy. Yet, as you know, as you well know, he's gone. He disappeared suddenly, seven years ago. I think I see where this story is going. Once a person is classified as missing for a certain period of time, they're considered legally deceased, correct? No absoluteness. Those rolled up sleeves conceal your company as well, young man. That certain period of time which you speak of is seven years. Ah. Yes, Miss Trucy. Although it pains me to say it. This past spring, April to be precise, was the time. Your father was legally declared deceased. And it was of a formal will. The secrets of our mighty mentor Magnifini passed to me. It was, in fact, stipulated by the will Magnifini by himself. Is that how it works, Apollo? Yeah, it's called death and absentia. He's, he's declared missing permanently. Daddy. Huh. So what about this magic show? <laughs> a challenge, is it? You want me to make that just up here? Very well, give it to me. Back, no thanks. I need it. All magicians like this? Apollo, what was that look just now? I'm just thinking how hard it is to get information on a magician. Yeah, it is. So I'll be gone. <gasps> Goodbye. Hello, Phoenix. How you doing? Back to the detention center, perhaps. Ooh, maybe. Ah, you're here to see Vera miss him. Yes, that's right. She's in the medical office at the moment. Medical office? Is she okay? She's just lying down. Said she didn't feel so good. I'm sorry, but I can't allow any meetings at the moment. Most annoying client ever. We should come back. Yeah, maybe. Back to the studio, I guess. Hmm. Emma, what do you think about this envelope? Emma, about this... Oh, that! Y yes, why well, that's a bright light red envelope. It sure is jumpy. Someone opened this, didn't they? And that's just sealed. Y your lips are sealed. That's a first. You mean you know what's inside the envelope? Sure, I read it after all. Ah, you mean you were the one who ripped this open. Ah, please, I would have steamed it open. I should just take a peek at it, apparently. 
know that I have a powerful weapon on my side. Weapon? Yes, the use of tools. Highly specialized tools for information gathering. Those are what I mind getting my hands on. You should try flattering her, Apollo. They say a little praise can open up big doors. Never heard that one, but it's a good advice. Let's try talking to her some more. Love that envelope we found. I was wondering if you could help us out with that tool you were mentioning. <laughs> you want to know about my tool, do you? It's called an X-ray analyzer. X-ray? Like the X-rays you get at the dentist. That's right. At least that's what I call it. Huh? It has a real name, but it's much more complicated. The X-ray spectralization... Something. How am I supposed to remember all that? So basically, it lets you see inside things. Like envelopes. That's right. You're sharp, Juicy. It's a bit more complicated than that. In practice, of course. Actually, to tell the truth, I'm not really sure how it works, scientifically. Can I try it out, Emma? Please? Oh, I suppose. Of course, I've already checked out everything suspicious myself. Alright, let's give it a spin, Apollo. Alright, what are you doing? Oh, just see if I can see through your hair. But it's like lead. Put it thing anymore, it might fall out. I wouldn't need an x-ray machine to see through it then. Let's just get down to business, shall we? Right, let's test it on a sample first. It what happens that I have a letter ticket here. You hit the sample and then if I click so. I don't, I don't say anything. Patience, there's no need to get to Lancy. Look at the right side of the screen. That's the layer view of the envelope. Layer view? I'm gonna set to display the outside of the envelope now. Actually, it's quicker to just have you give it a try. Turn that dial there for me, would you? That's right. That's how you choose what depth you want to scan. Hey, I got something. See? That's how you can read the letters in the ticket inside. Cool, huh? Except, I can't read them. Let's turn the dial a little more. I didn't understand this sheet of paper isn't really flat at all. When you zoom in that much, you see the paper is like a bunch of hills and valleys. Wow, really? The x device uses a beam with a wavelength of only... 0 0.05 microns. Bricks cards down a thin layer, so we can only show what's written on that layer. Not sure I'm entirely following you, but what good is it if you can't read anything? That's why we go on to step two. Try to bring the image a bit, if you would. The image? You mean rub the screen? Oh. Okay. Gotcha. There, that fixes the image in the screen. Now turn the dial again. Just a little. Okay, now you can rub this image to fix it, too. Hey, I get it. We just keep doing this until I got the whole thing. Exactly. Not bad. Neat. Let's see what's some more. Hmm. Almost. Let's put this one out. Lottery, you lose. Ouch, you lose. At least you know where you stand, eh? Anyway, now you see the truth hidden behind of my weapon. Neat, huh? Let's try it out on the real thing, shall we? Okay. That's too high. Go down. There we go. Some more. Okay. All right. A little bit more. And a little more.
Alright, that looks pretty readable to me. Okay, let's put this one out. Mr. Drew missed him. I deposited the... The hundred thousand... Dollars into the designated account. Please send a receipt once you've confirmed the transfer. So we deposited... Hundred ten thousand... Into Drew Bissom's account. This painting must be really valuable. There's another page in there. Care to take a look? Bet I do. If you're gonna read someone's mail, you might as read it all. Here's the second page then. Uh, <laughs> I don't wanna... I really don't want to do this right this second, but I can't just stop while well, I'm already doing it. It's too late for that. Is that good enough yet? Not quite. There we go. Okay, let's put this one out. Sign the papers and send an enclosed envelope with the enclosed stamp within three days. They are not reminded you speak of this to no one. There's a letter about painting every one of his paintings. Why all the secrecy though? And and what? Why was this letter the only one he knew? It's seven years old, right? Maybe it had some special significance to him. Well, Emma. Well, indeed. She knows something she's not telling us. Maybe she's keeping mum about it. Hmm. Huh. So, Emma, I was wondering. What's the story with this reporter that came in here for a story the night of the crime? I'm afraid I can't tell you, because he's going to be a witness tomorrow, I hear. I thought so. I'll never forget that face. But what was his name? All oh, right, Bushel. Bushel? He's at the risk to sell to the papers. The reporter comes for an interview with the painter. His first interview ever, and that night he's killed. Seems strange to you. Really strange. Just read a few questions. I'd like to speak with this reporter if I could. Well, I hear he's on the beat today, too. He said something about covering a musician. A musician? Well, it's not true, so he's at least one other person. It wasn't Valent Gamarte by any chance, was it? Yeah, something like that. He's got a big show lined up right here. Who's that interview, Valent Gamarte? Looks like I'll be heading out to that Coliseum again sooner than I thought. Here, I'll give you that reporter's card if you want. Hmm, thanks. Alright. Now that we're really massively over time because we started doing x raying of envelopes and, and stuff, and we just couldn't stop. Uh, next time we come back, we'll go talk to that reporter and probably probably go to trial at this point because we've we've looked at the only room here, I think. So I don't know. We'll see. So until next time.